ist. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Uh, after I gave this talk uh, title, it, it occurred to me that some of you have heard this song before, so my, my apologies. But it, it is kind of fun. So, um, and I suppose a sign of advancing age is what one tends to repeat oneself. Um, so it's it's some joint uh, things I've done with Christiane Rousseau in Montreal. So what I want to do is, is just look at uh, um, a rank K linear ODE um, on D, some basically disk that um, uh, with singularities. Okay, so the two cases, the first is, is case A. Um, so just y prime equals a of x over x to the n times y. So this is, is k by k, and it's holomorphic. Um, and it's the x to the n here that gives the, the singularity. And um, <clears throat> so if one looks at the, the classification, um, I'm going to suppose um, that A of zero, these are connections on a vector bundle. So um, I can use some gauge freedom. And I'm going to take the, um, the leading term here to be diagonal with, with distinct eigenvalues. And a little bit more, which you can achieve just by, essentially by turning your head, in other words, rotating. Um, so the, the, I'm going to order the real parts. So assume that they're, they're distinct. Okay, so the, the formal classification, because it's, it's uh, um, so I want to do classification. I do the formal one first. I can just by a, a, um, a power series of gauge transformations. Just gauge this to, um, well, A of zero, I suppose, plus A1, plus A to the n minus one, A sub n minus one, over x to the n, y, uh, A1, x, times y. Okay, where the AIs are diagonal. Okay, um, for the analytic classification, um, the trouble is that the power series that does that typically does not converge. And so you decompose your disk. So this is a local classification. So decompose disk into uh, two n minus one sectors. Okay, so let's take n equals four. <clears throat> and um, they're sort of determined by the, the these, well, these, you can take these standard anyway. Um, and uh, you get a solution um, on each sector. Two times n minus one. I believe. I hope. Otherwise, the whole thing is. Hmm? Solution on each sector. I might at the end of the talk say, oh, for n, read uh, n plus one. Anyway. Um, no, I think it's this. Uh, so two n minus one sectors. So there's a solution on each sector asymptotic. Um, so solution in the sense of basis of solutions, asymptotic to the uh, formal solution, which is, is just you integrate this and take the exponential. So you, you, you actually know 
the solution. Um, and between sectors, uh, you've got a change of basis matrix. And these are these uh, Stokes matrices. Okay, and um, the way it works is, is you get one that's upper triangular, um, one that's lower, one that's upper, lower, upper, and lower. Okay, so, so you get this alternation between upper, lower, upper, lower triangular matrices. Um, and this mod, um, basically the action of a torus, and if you normalize things, you can get rid of that, is your, your along with the formal classification, so this, this leading order term here, is basically what, what determines the equation. So this is the extra data, these, these Stokes matrices. Um, so case B um, is just um, Y prime equals, um, yep. So if I do a, a, a just a I, I formal gauge transformation with just a, a power series, it, it doesn't converge, yeah, <clears throat> in general. So that's, that's the issue. Um, so you get A of X over the uh, a polynomial, <clears throat> and I'll just take, say, just to be distinct, distinct zeros, and say order, order N, for example, and uh, times Y. Okay, so N distinct zeros. And of course, then the data is, is completely different. So again, um, I'll just suppose um, eigenvalues of the residues um, um, distinct um, and there you can get resonant, resonance here, so I'll just mod Z or with, of course, the convention that 2 pi i is possibly 1. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, you get a formal um, classification in each pole. Um, which is just that um, the formal equivalence is A, well, A of, uh, I suppose, I'll put an A hat here, um, over X minus XI, Y. So a constant, essentially constant, divided by X minus XI. Of course, easy to, to integrate. Um, the, um, the analytic classification, well, at each pole, it's just the same as the formal. is the formal, and um, globally, <clears throat> um, there's a monodro monodromy representation. Okay, so, so the, the, that's it. And so you, you have this sort of dichotomy, and of course, I could take n distinct zeros, I could also take, you know, one double zero and n minus two, and so on. Um, so the, the data is sort of vaguely similar. This is sort of has the flavor of splitting your monodromy into a certain number of factors. But still, it's not entirely clear how the data there and the data here are linked. Formally, of course, it's basically the same. Um, so, um, so let's say yeah, but A uh, deforms to B. And of course, uh, you could uh, actually get a family of these things. And then, and then what do you do? 
Okay. Um, the solution um, is to basically rewrite these equations. Um, write these equations as y dot equals a of xy, x dot equals, I'll put in a button there. In other words, you introduce a parameter t, so extra parameter. So this is um, sounding suspiciously like, like applied mathematics. Um, but we'll, we'll see what this, this actually means. So, of course, P epsilon of X is X to the N plus epsilon 1. Okay, and that, that's, that's your family. <clears throat> so, um, so, what do you do? Well, you, you start with this one. Um, so solve x dot equals p epsilon of x. And here there's some lovely things of, of I'm basically quoting uh, in Santanac. Santanac was a student of Duadzi and wrote this thesis. It was never published, but it's sort of around. And um, it's very nice. Of course, the, the formal solution to this is, is quite easy, right? You've got dx over dt equals that, so you get a solution which is just the integral dx over sine of x is equal to integral of dt. Um, <clears throat> but the, the key point, and, and uh, if you're a ge geometer and, and not used to these things, and they never quite mention that that's what they're doing, is you look at real flow lines. Real flow lines in um, T space. Um, so you you've got, <clears throat> in other words, uh, lines with constant imaginary part. Okay. Um, so, in other words, here's the T space, and you're just flowing from west to east, and in the x space, you're getting all these sort of funny things, and they're, they're curling up and doing all sorts of, of fun stuff. Okay. So let's do an example. Um, okay. equals the integral of dx over x to the n, so you get what you get, x is minus n minus 1 t to the minus 1 over n minus 1, so an nth root. Um, and, well, let's look at this thing near, uh, in fact, near x equals infinity, but of course that is, is t equals 0. <clears throat> so first, let's look at, look at it there, and what do you get? Well, um, if you start in your t-plane, you're flowing out this away. Um, so this is zero, and here's the, the x-plane. Then you're, you're flowing into infinity. Oops, I got the sign wrong, didn't I? Oh, well. Well, let's... Worry about signs. It's the thought that counts. Um, and as you typically um, say, flowing along lines above here, you will, as you start at infinity, you're actually quite small. And it gives you lines that sort of go like this and bounce out like that. And the other side gives you something that sort of does this. And then basically the, this, this formula here is, is multi-valued both ways, so it, it requires a bit of um, tolerance. But you get a phase diagram that looks 
like that. So flowing in, flowing out, flowing in, flowing out, flowing in, flowing out. And um, things like that. Okay, so you've got these these um, separatrices here, and then things sort of flow out. And uh, near x equals zero, which of course is, is t equals infinity. I won't bother with the t plane. Um, you're getting an opposite picture, um, which is instead of things sort of bouncing back, they 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 all flow in. So that one's going out. Sorry. In. Oh, you get the picture. And uh, things are going out like that, and then sort of coming back, and so on. So on like that. So they're they're going out and in, and the, the loops are getting smaller and smaller. That's n equals four, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so you've got you've got a a, um, a flow, and of course, what you're seeing here, of course, are the the Stokes sectors. made, um, so to speak, real. Um, Stokes sectors, in the, in the way it's set up in the complex plane, usually there's some, some flexibility. They're sort of pointing in a general direction. But the, these have actually sort of got boundaries. And, and if you look at what this does, basically it, it sort of splits the projective, the projective line, the sphere, into quarters, like an orange. <clears throat> OK. So now. Um, Question is is uh, we'll start. Should I start there? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's take a general epsilon. And um, the first thing is near um, x equals infinity. Uh, this is actually stable. So in other words, you're getting basically the same picture. Um, so it's, it's coming in and bouncing out. Okay. So deformed, but but roughly the same. Um, so they're they're, in other words, they're two n minus one separatrices. Um, half in, half out, and and they're alternating. Okay, and if you think about it, that actually defines a sort of sign for your your little sectors here. So there's a there's a plus if you want and a minus. Where it, if you're sitting at the at infinity in the plus sector is the the outwards on your left and here the outwards on your right. Hmm? Um, could just be the, 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 the fact that this thing has a pole, basically. And that's, that's why it's, so it's the dominant term. Yeah, that's, sorry? Yeah, that, The uh, right way to see it. Okay, so yeah, half in, half out. They alternate, um, and then so these are your their sort of organizing principles here, and and so away from infinity, you follow the separatrices. and then either um, one um, they come back. So you, you've got a picture where there, you've got something that's going out, it doubles around, and it just comes back on the nose. And of course, that's, that's quite unusual. This is a homoclinic setup. 
Um, or two, they end up um, at a singular point. Xi, in other words, P epsilon of Xi equals zero. Okay, so that's that they just sort of go out from infinity and then end up at a... Okay, so what we're going to do is we preclude one. Um, by um, asking that the imaginary part of the sum over any subset of zeros of 1 over p epsilon of x, p prime of epsilon of xi, uh, different from 0. So the, the reason for this is, you see, if you had a homoclinic orbit that was surrounding a certain number of, of zeros, you could just integrate a dt along the imaginary part of dt equals constant, and that would give you a zero integral. And then you compute it by residue calculus, and that's what it is. Okay, so what this does is it partitions. Um, Epsilon space into into domains p gamma. Okay, so now now I'm just going to um, look at uh, things in one domain. Okay, and um, place ourselves in a in a d gamma, and I'm going to <laughs> Switch to 8 equals 5 <laughs> is my uh, example. Okay. So now, um, again, you're, you're at infinity. You're, you're following out these, these uh, homoclinic orbits, and you see where they end up. So I need some. <clears throat> okay. So now um, you're near infinity. Um, at x equals infinity, or well, maybe, yeah. So again, maybe the, the p space here. And x, I think I'll just move along. Okay, so in the finite x plane, um, so say I've got five zeros. Um, Okay, and if you think about it, because t and x, you know, for x infinity, t is finite actually, so we're going to start out at infinity. So maybe I'll just place the, the neighborhood of infinity here in a sort of separate, separate space. So let's say we've got five of them, so that's four. There we go. So I start out, say, here. And of course, in p space, I'm starting out here, and I, I flow in. So it goes around in the plane, and this is the finite region, which I'm interested in. So I sort of end up, say, here. Okay. Um, on the other hand, I could have actually gone into this point, and that would give me something sort of being born in one of these and flowing out to infinity. Okay. And... Um, well, now I take a nearby line. It's no longer going through infinity. So it's no longer going through here. Remember, that, that would be a, a sector. Let's see, I'm flowing out. And it's going in. And I'm looking at, yeah, so it's sort of this one here. And this should be that line here. And what it's doing, in fact, is it's being born here. And flowing way out, way out here and near infinity, and then coming back to die here. These pictures, by the way, are slightly uh, misleading because as soon as you have an imaginary part to the eigenvalues of the flow, they're spiraling around like crazy. But, you know, 
topologically we're, we're okay. So now uh, just imagine that uh, you sort of move things in a bit and you've got things sort of coming down like that. And then say there's one that's going like this. And they're all going like that. And now it's sort of ballooning out in another direction. So maybe I'll, I'll put a bit of color on these, these zeros here. So it's ballooning out, and um, so as I, as I move along here, and then it eventually hits another point where it's going to infinity. Same here. Okay. So, um, so what you see basically is that the sort of infinity thing is doing like this, and say like that, and. going like that, right? Except it's going this way. So it's actually filling out a new sort of triangle here. It's, it's flipping around and, and filling out another one. Could be here, could be there. Okay. And so um, in particular, I could just choose um, between here one line in the middle. Okay. And it would end up being one of these lines here. Okay. So now let's let's sort of complete this this picture for for the other bits of the plane, um, and you're basically getting a sort of pairing. So let's say there's, there's one piece maybe sort of flowing out from here. Um, say something going in here, um, going in there. Going out here, and then this thing is being filled up like that, like that, and so there's a there's a sort of green bit here, which would be the middle of another sort of these intervals. Um, say another green one here, and again um, things sort of flowing out like that, and then going through like this. So you get this this picture of the zeros um, being joined by a tree. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I, it's you're you're pointing out things that I should be. On top of, so I'm 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 grateful, but I I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and um, so the the this tree is in some sense in the invariant for the this domain e gamma. So this is on e gamma, but there, there's a sort of dual thing you could do. Um, Let's see. I've used. I haven't used orange yet. Okay, which is to sort of dual graph of the tree. So the variant um, tree um, and uh, dually. So if I choose a, a sort of base point in, in each sector here, so I, I just think of them as on a circle, then sort of flip that around so I'm now in the finite picture, um, I get a bunch of points. They, as I pointed out, these, these sectors come with signs. So plus, minus, plus, minus, minus. And you see the dual picture basically is that I join the two, the two sectors that are meeting in the middle here. So this one says coming back to here and so on. So this one is like that. I've got one that's like that and like that. So, um, so I end up with a picture that's like this. Okay. And the, the theorem, um, 
which is, is Duadi and Santnak. So the, the D gammas are classified by, by these, these pictures. Um, there's a Catalan number worth of them. And um, I thought it was n plus one. It's one over n plus one. N plus one to the alpha. <laughs> and I, I thought it was n plus one at least. So, um, I, I, okay, but I'll, I'll check again. I, I think you're right. Yeah, sorry. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's anyway, yeah. Okay. Um, so, the, the, um, <clears throat> Right, and the, the D gammas are actually um, contractible. And in fact, holomorphically isomorphic to a, a product of upper half spaces. And, and the, the invariance basically is, is you, the points in infinity here, and they're joined by the thing. In other words, it's the, these are real flows, but complex flows are just as legitimate, really. And it's the time necessary to flow from infinity out there to infinity out here. And that's the, the, uh, the thing here. Okay. So that's the, the picture, and this is, this is sort of, should stay up there. Um, good. Okay, so that's the, the sort of Duadi, Duadi Snapnak. And, um, Of course, the second thing you want to do now is look at the, the vector equation. Um, vector equation I guess. y prime equals a of x of t of y of course along the the imaginary t flow so along m t equals constant okay um So what's happening here? X of t, and, and you want the asymptotics. So so we have that X of t as uh, t goes to plus infinity, tends to say x plus, and X of t as t goes to minus infinity, tends to a constant x minus, and What's more, if epsilon is small, those constants are the same because all these points are close together. So they're roughly the same. Right? So close. So let's let's look at a toy model. So y prime equals a of zero. Why? Because after all, they're all being born at the origin because epsilon is small. Um, and there, there you have a basis of solutions, right? It's very easy to solve. They're exponentials. Um, so you get y1 equals, say, e to the a1 uh, t, 0, 0. y2 equals 0 e to the a2 t, 0. 
and y n equals zero, zero, uh, e to the a n t. Okay, so now um, if you think about it, these this is the real parts are ordered. So this this one grows or decays fastest, or decays fastest or grows the most slowly, depending on its sign of the of the real part. This one is the sort of next to slowest growth, and then the fastest one is this. And what that means is, as you're going out to, at least as you're going, t goes to plus infinity. Um, so you get a flag. E1 plus. Given by the growth rates. Okay. Um, I remember Nigel Hitchin showing me his work on monopoles when I was a student and pointing out to me that a line has two ends. <laughs> and so you can get a, a flag um, E1 minus E2 minus. See now, E1 is this, E2 are these two, and so on, and EN, of course, the whole thing. The other flag is going the other way. So YN is the one-dimensional one. Uh, YN, YN minus one is the two-dimensional one. Right? So this is the span of YN. This is the span of YN, YN minus one. And so the, these flags are actually transverse. Hmm? SL2? <laughs> um, well, I suppose, well, yeah, you could, you could do it. Yeah, you'd have to just do two, subs, two lines. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the principal SL, yeah, sort of. Anyway, but we'll, we'll see. Um, anyway, so the point is that you've got this toy model, and... There, there's actually uh, a paper of Levinson. Um, this is, is sort of, uh, basically this holds under um, our class of, of perturbations. So in other words, the, the things stay and they stay transverse. Good. Um, and so, um, what you get basically, you see from, from this picture where you're starting out, say, out here. Okay. Say I pick a, pick a basis here. You flow forwards, you get a flag. You flow backwards, um, you get the opposite flag. And so, um, um, picking a base point in each sector, you get a flag of, you get two flags of solutions, and their intersection in the obvious sense, uh, basically reduces you to a torus, right? Intersection. Here's a basis up to a torus, actually. Okay, so you've got, in other words, E1 plus, and then you've got E2 plus inter, E minus 1 minus. Hmm? <laughs> this is much more. The French expression is sur le plancher des vaches. So the, the cows, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the floor that, that has the cows on it. Sorry? 
No, no, I, I solve the equation. I flow, I flow forwards, I get one flag. Okay, so I've got a flag of solutions one way. I flow backwards, I get another flag, and they're transverse. I'm just going to the next, just taking intersection. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's not, well, if, if, they, if it's there, it's hidden. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, any, any, maybe. Um, okay, so I, I've got, a, in other words, a basis up to scale. So in other words, I've got a basis up to scale at here. I've got one, say, here, and there, and there, and there, and there, and there. So in each sector, I've got a scale. And remember, at the limit, these, the blue lines were your Stokes sectors. So you've got basically a basis on each Stokes sector. Okay, so these are the generalized Stokes sectors where the, the points that were formerly together have been stretched apart and have a little, little green line joining. But then what's happening is you're going out. Um, if you look at what happens uh, here on the boundary between, say, this sector and this one, these, basically, the flags here, right, have the same, same plus flag. So the, 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 you had a pair of flags here and a pair of flags here, but they're sharing the plus flag. They've got different minus flags. They're sharing the plus. Which means that if you change the basis, they're related by an upper triangular matrix. Okay, now here it's the outflow, right? And so if you go from here, from this sector to that one, they're sharing the minus flag. You've got different plus flags. So you've got a lower triangular. And so on. Upper. Lower. Um, upper. Lower. Upper. And lower. So you've got generalized Stokes matrices. Um, more intriguingly, if you, if you go through the center here, they're sharing both flags, so they're related by a diagonal matrix, which you could get rid of because you can, you've got some, some freedom here in your choices. So... Um, these matrices, in other words, they're, if you think about it, they're, they're a way of decomposing. The monodromy, remember, is just going around the, the little pink dots here. And so you, if you, say, decompose the monodromy around these two here, you start here, you're going through the upper, the lower, this upper, and back by the diagonal. So there's a diagonal too, and so on. So you just sort of trace the... the green and blue lines that you cross as you're tracing around. A, so it's factoring all the, the monodromy, basically, into upper and lower. Okay, so... Um, and basically, because these matrices are determining the monodromy, um, the generalized... Determine the connection. Um, with, of course, fixed, um, fixed formal type. Okay. Um, well, that's, that's one sector. Now, of course, you have to deal 
with the fact that you've got 1 over n plus 1, 2 n choose n of them. Um, and so what happens when you change sectors? And you, you're basically interested in understanding what happens just under generic thing. There, there's, there's a few, few little issues here. How do you change sectors? You're changing sectors. So the generic bifurcation. So just look at what happens in the t-plane. You've got a point here going to infinity. Well, this is, this is a blue line. And you've got another blue line here. And this one is, is just moving up. OK, so in the middle, um, you'll get a picture that looks like that. OK? And of course, this, this is a, that thing in the middle here is, is a homoclinic orbit. Um, and then, of course, your situation has changed so that this one is now below that one. Okay, so that's, that's what's happening. You're taking one of them and moving it through. Um, okay. Now, first remark is that actually you can, when you're here, even at the homoclinic orbit, um, you were just flowing westward. If I'd chosen, remember it's the same ODE we're solving. If I'd chosen, instead of to flow eastward rather, to flow sort of slightly northeastward, I would be keeping uh, basically in this domain. And if I'd flowed slightly um, southeastward, I'd be in that domain. Okay, so it's it's a you can you can think of things, I mean there's no God given reason why you should be going straight east. And so um what it's saying basically is you can sort of make domains overlap if you feel like it. So that's another way of, of thinking of this. And it doesn't, as long as you don't move too much here, it doesn't change the flag structure and everybody's happy. Um, so you get these bifurcations. Um, Well, you, I'm just saying that it, as you're reaching the sort of close to this boundary where it's, it's hitting on that side, you couldn't just make the two overlap. In other words, you're looking at the same ODE, but different ways of gluing it together. I'll sort of see, you'll see what, what happens with the bifurcation. But just to say that the, the invariant um, let's see, that was orange chalk, wasn't it? So what's happening to the, the invariant is that it's, um, so you have a domain where there's stuff, there's stuff, yeah. stuff, and stuff, and you have, say, a lines that look, uh, look like this. And the type of bifurcation that's happening is, again, Stuff here, stuff here, stuff here, and it's going like that instead. Okay, so it flips. And on the on the graph, it's basically just a um, the tree is basically just a, a situation where the uh, thing is going like this. 
to that. Remember, all of these things have signs, so it, the, the, the bifurcation has to preserve the sign. Um, in, the, in the X space, so you, you'll have a, basically, again, there, there, there's a piece that stays invariant, so I just draw it like that. And you have um, let's see now lines coming in like that, going like that. And no, no. So sorry. This is this is uh, this is green. And um, it's it's bifurcating to um, what is this? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, And so what's happening to the, the factoring well it's it's a, a bit more elaborate, but I'm just gonna say it's like taking the same matrix and factoring it in two different ways as upper and lower triangular, changing the order. So it's it's of that type. It's it's a little bit more elaborate obviously, but it's it's uh it's of that type. Okay, so then, then you have the, uh, the theorem um, that basically that, that uh, you see on the domain, um, domain proposition. Okay, so you want to see, in other words, you've got a deformation. You've got a family of connections here, a family of connections there, and you want to see how they, they glue. And the, the statement basically is connections glue if they have the same monodromy representation. Um, this D gamma actually cleverly excludes multiple zeros. So it's, it doesn't show in the residue. And so you're basically dealing with, with simple zeros. And you know there that it's, it's basically the constraint is they have the same monitor. So it's factored differently, but it should be the same representation. Um, now globally, of course, you need a little bit more. Um, you want... Um, so, what do you have? You have a gluing co-cycle, which is a gauge transformation. Um, D gamma gamma prime for gluing D gamma to D gamma prime. So you need um, the co-cycles to be trivial. So G gamma would be essentially H gamma, H gamma prime, G gamma gamma prime, sorry, and uh, continuous to the boundary. And basically, because they're continuous to the boundary, um, when you've got double poles, you're gluing in you'll get something that's holomorphic um, everywhere except at co-dimension one, so it's holomorphic there. And then for higher co-dimension things, it's basically Hartog's theorem, so it just goes through. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so so that's the uh, that's the end uh, end result. So there there are sort of two two morals to this thing uh, that are that are kind of interesting. Um, one is just in terms of understanding Stokes data geometrically, which has always at least been a bit of a mystery. Whenever the word asymptotics is pronounced in my presence, I go slightly. Um, Um, and uh, so the, the role of the, the flags, the growth rates, basically, as you go in on just for the standard Stokes picture, you see you're, you're flowing out like this and you're coming back in. And basically, you're choosing a basis that has that, that flag behavior at the, the point. So it's mimicking the, uh, the model solution. Um, so that's... that's uh, that's one thing that's, that's very nice. And the other thing, it, it basically highlights, even in understanding Stokes, the, the role somehow of the reals. The, the Stokes phenomenon is, sort of has the real numbers hidden in it, really. It's not just a complex thing. You're, you're chopping it into sectors. Now this, you know, for, this is, these are not Zariski open sets. Right? That's that's the uh, sort of moral of this. So it, th this whole sort of real picture is in, in fact quite natural, uh, a natural extension of this these ideas, basically these two things. And once you have that, so anyway, it's kind of kind of amusing. So thank you. Well, no, the model equation isn't, for example. The model equation isn't. The model equation is just the diagonal. Yeah, so that's not a, that's not a kth order uh, ODE. Well, no, no, you need, a, uh, you need a cyclic vector. Oh, so maybe, yeah, distinct eigenvalues. I suppose you could, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so you could make it to a cyclic vector. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I've been speaking prose. <laughs> I know, I know, not prose, but I'm, I'm sorry, you know, it's this whole thing about, you know, un, unknowingly, um, yeah, stumbling on the, this, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I, I, should, I should look at this, I, I'm, I'm uh, a little bit more uh, deeply, yeah. Anyway, thanks. Oh, they're, they're quite, you could choose them anywhere. And, and I mean, it, it's sort of sweeping through these, these two sectors, right? So you could just choose one. Because in this, in this T picture, right, you've got the blue line, the blue line. You choose any one in the middle. Yeah. Um... Well, here, here we sort of simplified life by just taking the, the original singular point. It's just one point, yeah. So, so life gets hairier or more tentacular. The dependence on... Um, this is... Well, what are the choices here? They, you know, you just think of it. You're, you're actually solving the ODE on the whole plane. It's multi-valued, so it's branched around, and you know, so you've got this cover, both sides actually, right? And um, and then you're just basically choosing a set of directions to go through it, and that's your 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 choice. And indeed, that that was the point of bifurcation there, where I could I could just wiggle things so it falls in one, falls the other. 
So the, 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 the issue there is sort of coinciding over an open set, basically. Yeah. Well, that, that's that's what this is doing. Yeah, it's flat. It's a flat connection that you're unfolding. So. Um, It's, I suppose, fairly explicit, but it, it's um, the spectral data, of course, is completely, you know, it's, it's in another world. So it would be hard to, to see what that is uh, how it's doing. And, uh, you know, the other thing is, you know, it gets quite complicated. For, for n equals two, it's two, two, two sectors. It's quite two domains. Um, and even there, there's some subtleties when you're gluing things together. They, there's a sort of self-monitoring. Um, what, what I perhaps didn't say is there's a, these, these sort of, uh, there's a little extra twist here of a G gamma gamma because the, the thing is coming over itself in a sort of, so in, in some, some part of the, the covering, you have to make sure that it glues back to itself correctly. So it's, it's uh, Okay.